Salem was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing the linen and blood. His mother used to make for him a little roll and take it to him each year, and she went out with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is Psalm 184. We'll read responsibly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his souls. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, high stars, and you rise above the earth. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. And all who heard him were amazed 
amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Where did he go? I thought you were keeping an eye on him. How did he lose track of our son? Ah, there he is. Why did you leave us? You really scared us. Do you ever remember being in this situation where you lost track of a loved one? Children can be very independent and can sometimes wander away from their parents, especially in public places. I happen to be one of those kids who didn't care if my parents were in sight or not, especially when we were in stores. As long as I knew where I was, it didn't matter. In today's gospel, you can see where Jesus was a very independent kid and seemed to assume that his parents would just know where he was. Imagine being in a standing room only sporting event and trying to stick together as a family. As you are moving through the people, you suddenly realize that one of your children is no longer right there beside you. What would your response be? Worried? Scared? What would you do? Go look for them? Start asking people if they had seen them? In, this, in today's Gospel from Luke, Mary and Joseph have been traveling with a large group of people for the Passover, and they realize that Jesus is no longer with them. They in turn go back to Jerusalem to look for their son, and when they find him, they are astonished. Are they astonished because they found him? Because of where they found him? Are they more just angry with him? Or are they astonished because of what he's doing, with answering all the questions? We may never truly know, but what we can take away is that Jesus was comfortable where he was and did not seem to care that his parents had left him behind because he knew right where he was. Jesus boldly tells his parents that of course he would be in his father's house, the temple, just as kids can be independent and completely comfortable with where they are, even if their parents are nowhere in sight, we can find comfort in this, knowing that God the Father is always there. Jesus was an independent child, which we would all expect, now since we all know the story and who he was. But even Mary and Joseph were not fully aware of who Jesus, their son, was and what he would do. Although I have not been blessed with a child yet, I have watched children grow up, and I can remember myself as a child. More importantly, I can remember how terrified my parents were at times when I would go off on my own in a crowded store with very little care in the world to where they were. Because I knew right where I was, and I knew where I would be and where I was going, and it didn't matter where they were. I can remember my parents coming to me and saying, you really scared us because we did not know where you were and worried that someone had taken you. My response would be something on the order of, well, that didn't happen, and I knew where I was, so no big deal. Jesus was not only just like us as an adolescent, he was us. Jesus was the incarnation of God and was fully human as well as fully divine, which can cause us to forget that Jesus was us. He was human. We do not get much information about Jesus' childhood besides this passage in Luke. Everybody, everything else skips right to the baptism after the birth. But this passage shows Jesus being a typical adolescent who has a deep understanding of theology and what his calling from God is. How many of you at the age of 12 had any idea of what you wanted to be or were feeling called to do? It's okay if you didn't, because as we know, most people change what they want to do with their lives 
in high school or college, or some even after college. As adolescents, we start to find our passions and start venturing out on our own to really create our identity. Recognizing God's calling is not always an easy task. You have to be open to almost anything to truly see where God is calling you. God continues to call us from our birth to the age of 12 and even on to 103. God stirs us to do something, to go somewhere, to serve somebody, and to preach news to people for whom it is good and glorious and God sent. Some of us have or will do what we say we want to do at the age of 12, and others of us will not figure it out until later in life. Me, for example, at the age of 12, I wanted to be a doctor. I was adamant I was going to be a doctor. There was no change in my mind. By the time I got to high school, it was, I'm just going to be a nurse. Started college, it's going to be a nurse. That's all I was going to do. That's what God was calling me to do. At the age of 21, I felt a smack in the face and said, no, ministry is where you need to be. That is where I'm calling you to do, is go and be a pastor. So just as some people don't know, what they're doing or what their calling is. I didn't either. It's okay to not know at 12 what your calling is. Because even Jesus didn't know everything he was going to do. We all have a calling from God that may change as we age and may be stronger at times than others. A call from God for a certain vocation will be seen internally, externally, and spiritually. A calling is not just for those going into being a pastor but is for all vocations in the world, as each and every one is ministering to the world and helping to live out God's mission. Even though Jesus was engaging in conversation in the temple, does not mean he truly knew how powerful he would be. Mary and Joseph for sure did not understand his questions, let alone how powerful he would be. Jesus was incarnate as a human to help share God's love and grace with everyone, and to help see that God has many things in store for each one of us. Not even Jesus knew all that we know about his life, about his death and resurrection, but he was one man who went on his own way, followed his own sense of direction, and marched to the beat of his own drum. He was full of the Holy Spirit then, they said then, and we say now. Just as Mary says at the Annunciation of Jesus' birth, Here I am, we should all be prepared to say, Here I am, send me. For being willing to say, God, here I am, send me, we are open to wondering what we are called to do each and every day as we wander through this world. Allow yourself to wonder what God has in store for you as you continue to wander on this earth at the beat of your own drum. Jesus marched to the beat of his own drum by walking away from his parents at 12, giving them a scare. So what is stopping us from marching to the beat of our own drum to hear God's call?